There's lots of conflicts of interest and controversy surrounding the statin drugs. I'll say. I mean, there have been times when the drug companies have actually suggested putting statins in the water. <laughs> and now we're going to the other extreme of seeing some of the complications we see that were little suspected and quite shocking, actually. Well, you know, their dangerous side effects are mostly ignored, and the percentage of the benefits are often misrepresented. Mm -hmm. And there's inadequate information that's relayed to the doctors and the patients, making it difficult to make informed decisions about using these medications. So statin drugs such as Lipitor, Mevacor, Zocor, Crestor, all the ORs, <laughs> well, maybe not all, but anyway, <laughs> and Provacol and Lescol also, are often unsafe choices to reduce cholesterol. So new in the news is a recently exposed side effect, sperm damage. Boy, you make, it makes you wonder when it's going to stop. You know, drugs, pharmaceutical drugs, do some wonderful things, and we need them for sure in some situations. But we rely on these drugs all the time as our primary way of doing things, Vicki, and it probably isn't the best thing to do because there are so many complications. We're looking at hundreds of thousands of deaths every year, and literally millions of complications. You know, many times it seems to me that there's almost an epidemic of, of infertility. Yes. You know, and I know that some of it's from environmental toxins and uh -huh. even things like uh, fragrances and skincare products uh -huh. and so forth. And now we're adding statins to the list. And I think that this could be why we see so much in vitro fertilization and, and multiple births. And well, so it might forth. be one of the reasons because there are a lot of people taking statins. And there was a study that was published in Reproductive Biology and Endocrinology in July of 2014, Vicki. And what it really showed, and it was promoted by a fellow named Sayer G, last name oh, yeah. is J, J I, who founded GreenMedInfo.com, which I highly recommend people go to. He has a lot of information there that is right along the lines of how I th and Vicki think. Anyway, what they found in this particular uh, article is that they evaluated the effects of 10, 10 milligrams a day of Lipitor for five months in 17 normal men who had normal cholesterol. And what they found is that there was a surprising number of problems that were seen in sperm and in the fluid that sperm live in. About 31% of the sperm were, de were uh, decreased in their numbers. Uh, there was another 9.5% that didn't have the normal vitality that they have. And the total sperm uh, mobility, though it increased 7.5%, still was associated with a lot of morphological changes that were a problem. Well, you know, there were also some other statistics, mm -hmm. like about how many years to, pre to prevent one death and how many people... Well, this was statins in general. Yeah. Well, Sayer G actually has a whole boatload of, of articles on statins, as we do on drsabuter.com. And what I like about Sayer G is that we think alike. He's not an MD. He didn't have the the problems that I had when I was in my learning because what we learn is what we're taught, right? And a lot of what we're taught is dictated by who? The pharmaceutical industry. And when that happens, there are some issues. But Sayer G really has put some interesting information out about statins that have to do uh, with the other complications that we see too. Yeah, well, you know, the statins can even cause some of the problems that are supposed, that the statins are supposed to, to correct by weakening the heart muscle. Mm -hmm. And that can lead to congestive heart failure. Well, that's one of the things. I think the place where a lot of the time we get confused, and it works in both ways, the complementary and alternative doctors or the nutritionists tend to be so opposed in general about drugs that they overstate things. And they make you think that every drug has got so many complications that nobody should take it. And yet there are times when it absolutely is a good idea. I do recommend the statins for people who've had a heart attack or a stroke and they've got cholesterol that's not normal, and they are not following the lifestyle approaches that they could that might help them. The statins in that case have been shown to reduce mortality and morbidity in a very meaningful way. But when you, when you look, Vicki, at people who have, like women, who don't have a high risk for coronary artery problems or stroke, and they have a slightly abnormal cholesterol, and doctors are prescribing statins for them, I mean, the risk of dying over a five-year period would, would require about 23,000 women take that drug for five years. That's, that's unreasonable because there's so many other complications of the statins. Well, like one of the other complications is that it could possibly lead to diabetes. 
And that's not that and, uncommon. And here, the statins are supposed to be about prevention. Uh huh. And if you have diabetes, that can lead to heart disease. And that's right. Well, that's one thing. We have liver disease to look at. We have muscle weakness and uh, pain and necrosis. It can lead to kidney failure in the extreme form. It can cause peripheral neuropathies. And now we add to the list all these other things that we're seeing. And it starts to make you wonder, what are we doing? Shouldn't we focus more on the things that we can do the most about, which is lifestyle medicine? If you ate healthy, you slept well, uh, you didn't, weren't exposed to environmental toxins, you exercised on a regular basis, chances are you're going to do very well and not have problems with heart disease or strokes. Well, there's a reason to have high cholesterol. Like, for example, even a normal it helps cholesterol. with inflammation, and it helps with, with the, with the art, arterial damage. Well, cholesterol doesn't help with inflammation. If there's inflammation, it causes uh, problems that you see with the statins. But I think what you're trying to say is that these are our friend, because without them, we would be dead. You have to have it to make vitamin D, the sex hormones, to make neurotransmitters, to make digestive enzymes that control uh, fat metabolism, uh, it, it does a lot of things, makes healthy cell membranes. It's important but to But I have thought cholesterol. that they help to heal inflammation. Well, they're there in the place where the, where the plaque is, and it goes there as an attempt to do it. But when LDL cholesterol is, is oxidized, it's a problem because that's what builds the plaque. So the way the cardiologists look at it is they want to lower the risk of having a heart attack as much as they can. And so a lot of the time... They're reducing cholesterol levels to even 150 or less. And in that case, there have been good studies, Vicki, that show that what happens is we have a higher all-cause mortality, even though we may have a slightly lower risk for having heart disease from the, in the form of heart attacks. So it's not good to have your cholesterol too low. Exactly. So there's a place for statins, but it's a relatively small place. It's nothing like what it's promoted by the, uh, by the pharmaceutical companies and in the ads that we see on TV. Well, the other thing that I thought was interesting is that eight out of nine of the physicians that are on the committee for, um, for the guidelines, they had strong financial ties to the statin drug companies. Yeah, well, see, this is what you see happening a lot of the time and how policy changes. Because whenever there's a conflict of interest, you can't trust the results that you're getting. So when we put this whole subject uh, in, into perspective, the statins are good drugs that should be used occasionally on some people, but it would be in a very small minority of the population, and I wouldn't use it for someone who's never had a heart attack or stroke, uh, and I would probably only consider it in those people who really are having a major problem with heart attacks and strokes and who are resistant to using lifestyle medicine. 